Hello, leader. Welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's your host, Kaylee here, and you are tuning in to episode number 224. Today, I want to talk about managing expectations. This is so important because we all have them. Whether we realize we do or not, we are always holding other people, our team members, our colleagues, our family, uh, the people around us and ourselves to a certain standard. And our expectations are often not met or not realized, or we feel disappointed about what we expect in ourselves or other people, mainly because we've been vague about what those expectations are. And um, I felt compelled to talk about this today with you because I had a conversation with a um, client this week, and we were discussing how frustrating it is when it's totally obvious when there's policies in place, and it's totally obvious when there's a certain tone that's set around the practice, or we've been operating in a certain way, or this is the way we do things around here, and everybody is has clear direction on how what that should look like and what marching orders are, and yet those expectations are still not met. And it reminded me of a conversation I had with Luke, my 12 year old, we were on our way to junior lifeguards and he had no shoes on in the car. And I said, where are your shoes? And his face was in complete frustration. And he said, the housekeepers hide my shoes and <laughs> said, they're not hiding your shoes. They're trying to clean them up because they're probably who knows where they are. Right. And he said, no, I can't find them. I leave them in what we have our little mudroom, which we call a locker room. I have lockers in there. I leave them in my locker room and, um, and they're gone and they're nowhere to be found. And they purposely hide them. And I said, Luke, why don't you just, why don't we have a conversation and tell them where you want those shoes to be put? And he said, there's no conversation to be had. They're in the locker room. They should stay in the locker room. And it made me laugh and really kind of circle back and think back to many conversations I really have um, with myself and my own business, obviously, and, and with the clients that I have the privilege of working with, you know, who come to me in open honesty about this sort of like obviousness of the way that people around us should operate because it's so obvious to us. And, um, you know, seeing it from the other side with Luke and the sandals, and I realized, you know, it's not so obvious to them. They don't know whether you just kicked your shoes off there and they're out of place or you want them in there. And so we need to really be clear about what those expectations are. And so there's a few things that I see um, just common pitfalls around the way that we operate in our business that create this breakdown or, or allow for this breakdown in communication around what our expectations are. And so I wanted to address those with you today in hopes that maybe you think about this and the way that you're interacting with your team and the way that you are able to better communicate to them what is expected of them in your brain. Okay. And we'll start by just the obvious is that we are holding people to a standard, whether we communicate it to them or not. And so I want you to think about this. When you think about what is expected of your employees, you might even do a journal exercise and write down, here's what standard of excellence looks like in this role. Here's what I expect of them and how they should be showing up every single day. A lot of times we pigeonhole ourselves into creating an expectation in their job description around what their key results areas are from a deliverable or tactical standpoint, but we fail to communicate to them what's expected of them and the way that they operate or the way that they achieve those standards. And that's just as important, right? Just as important of what you're doing is the way that you're doing it. So here's from the leadership standpoint, I think it's important for us as leaders to really think about how we can do a better job of not only communicating, but facilitating that experience for ourselves where we're, we are, we, we're, we're clear on our own about what our expectations are and we're allowing ourselves to communicate those and not holding ourselves in judgment because we have those expectations, but just being realistic with ourselves about that's what they are. And that's the standard that I expect in my head. And then getting those on paper and communicating those to the team and then holding the team accountable to those expectations. Very simple to talk about, but it is very um, 
rarely executed properly because of the things we have going on inside of our little brain here, okay? So today I wanna to talk about just three things that I see that are sort of pitfalls around the way that we manage um, expectations of our, our employees in our business. So um, number one is the idea of a tactician versus a strategist. So this is essentially understanding that there are two types of employees in our company. One is a, you know, check the box, type of employee, an employee who loves a to-do list, an employee, when you give them a task, they are really excited to go and execute it and turn it in. And then the other type of employee is a strategist. They want to think about the plan. They are visionary. They want to have a big project and go through all of the steps and delegate and assign those steps to other people or themselves, and then deliver a result. And so often we miss uh, diagnose or really like don't really understand which type of employee we have or we don't think about it. And we try to delegate a result to somebody who is a tactician brain. So we'll say something like build a campaign or go create uh, bundled procedures or a new promotion, or we might say generate, you know, uh, find a way to produce X amount of profit on this particular task, or, you know, we're, we're, we're delegating an outcome versus giving the actual 10, 15 steps to them on how to get to that. Then they go take their time. We have to go follow up with them. They miss steps. We get frustrated. We're not sure why they didn't do it. At the end of the day, that's not how their brain works. They are not a strategist. They are a tactician. Okay, and on the flip side, you have a strategist who may become frustrated when you're micromanaging every single step of the process for them when they're trying to deliver a result. So it's important to understand who you have on your team. Very few people, right? We are unicorns who are both. We are both a strategist. We are both a, a strategist and a tactician. And so we can think of a visionary project and then we can reverse engineer that into these actionable tactical steps that somebody can take. Not everybody can do that. So very often, most of the time, I see frustrations happening when we're misdiagnosing or we're not really thinking through how to best delegate a project to an employee or to create a system for an employee in which the result will come when they tactically follow the specific steps that we have laid out for them. And that does take time to build those processes. The second piece to um, second pitfall to managing expectations that I see is conversations with employees around time versus results. What I mean by that is very often we're paying our employees hourly or salary uh, based on a certain number of hours that they're working. But at the end of the day, what we really want is for them to do the job and to produce a result. And so when we're having these frustrations about like, I keep hearing, you know, well, it's summer and things are slow and I'm traveling and I don't know what my team is doing during their downtime. Totally valid, right? Um, to have those, those questions. And, you know, ultimately it's like, instinctive to want to say, oh, well, I'm going to give them a list of things they can do because if they're clocked in, I need every hour to be productive. In the bigger picture, the bigger scope of things, if we gave them a result to deliver, we wouldn't really care how many hours it took them to produce that result. Okay. So let me use an example. So if you hired a painter to come and paint your house, right? And he charged you by the hour, you would want him to take less time to paint your house than more time. And in fact, you probably would rather just know exactly what that entire project is going to cost because then you can budget for that and then you know the house is painted. And in fact, you would want that house to be painted in one hour, not in two weeks, right? Because you want the project done. So the one side of our brain knows that we want a result, we want an outcome, we want a profit, uh, for those activities that that employee is engaging in, but then we measure them by what they're doing hourly. And so though that is a, that is a big place, like a big place of disjointment where I see frustrations around expectations that we have because we're not clearly laying out what that result is that we need that employee to achieve. 
Um, and so then we don't know how else to measure their activity in our company other than by what they're doing every hour. So I want you to think about that when you are talking with an employee or you're giving them a project or you're looking at what the process is of what they should be doing every single day. Um, we don't, do we really care how long it takes them to do it if they're doing it? So the idea is get them really competent first at doing their job. And then you can start to create efficiencies where they can do that really great job in shorter amounts of time. And then you can start to add more things to their plate, right? And so instead of just looking at activity, right? I, busyness, I don't want to pay for busyness. I want to pay for somebody to do an excellent job at something. And then I can start to find ways to allow them to do it or teach them, or they can become more competent at it to do it quicker. And then we can add more to their plate from there, okay? The third place where I see uh, frustrations or breakdown or pitfalls in managing expectations with employees is this idea of proactivity versus reactivity. And so, Oftentimes, we don't have strong systems built in our company that showcase to the employee exactly what they're supposed to be doing to achieve that, that ultimate result. So going back to that whole strategist versus tactician idea, if we don't have a system built, so I may say, for example, something like, let's run a campaign. What does that mean? Does everybody know? In the, on the team who's involved in that process, what steps need to be taken to roll out a campaign? Or do I have to ask people to do things and then constantly follow up with them? In which case I am the system and there isn't a clearly laid out documented system that should take place where everybody knows they're checking part of their list and this whole wheel list is, is turning together. It's all in alignment and everything is happening together in unison. Um, because everybody knows exactly what their piece is in that project. So this happens by creating a system to start with. So if you don't have that or know how to do that, then we can help you jump into summer school. Um, actually, we have um, we have that training coming up, um, or we may have it on demand for you, depending on when this podcast launch launches. But um, we can help you do that. But it just takes really the first time and documenting that and then building out the structure of what who should be involved in what piece of that. When you have that in place, then you have employees who are proactive, okay? On the flip side, when you don't, what happens is, oh, we realized our numbers are down. Now let's scramble to find ways to get the numbers up or to reactivate patients or to, we're sort of responding to action based on things that have happened in the past. And I don't mean evaluating your, your metrics and looking at the things that you created to see what's working and not working. What I mean is this fire drill of reactivity every day around a patient call, this happened, that happened, you know, I'm moving in a million different directions because I have to respond to everything. That's a lack of systems in your business model. Okay. Now, this is a huge point of where expectations can can get misaligned because we may expect our employee, here's their job description, here's what they're supposed to be producing, here's, I even have their KRA spill, this is what I need them to do every day. But then I don't have a system to support all of these new ideas or the projects that we have going on in the business, like this campaign or running a promotion. And so now all of a sudden it's a one week, you know, flippant or just reactive um, rush to get something done. And that pulls people out of the day-to-day -day activities that should be contributing to the bigger ultimate goal. And now all of a sudden that sort of your eye is off of that bigger target because everybody is busy in this fire drill mode. Okay. We've all been there. Um, but this is a huge point of misalignment of expectations and where I see our clients get frustrated with their team when they say, well, you're supposed to be focusing on managing the overall productivity of every employee, right? Or my front desk is supposed to be um, responding to this and answering these calls, making these um, follow-up calls, checking in on these patients, you know, managing inventory. Well, yes, but then when you put a new something in place without a real system, it's pulling them out of doing those things, those those daily activities that we know ultimately produce the bigger result. In the end, we become frustrated and then expectations are off. And what happens is 
each employee we have to remember is that everybody has their own agenda. Okay. And so they're going to be doing what they feel like they need to do to achieve their own results in the company. Um, most of the time they're trying to please you, to make you happy, but remember they're showing up for a reason every single day. And so what's so important, just kind of drawing back into the bigger scope of things um, at a higher level is to find a way to make sure that your team member's agenda fits within your agenda so that you are not constantly disappointed by them focusing on the things that they think fulfills their like doing the things they enjoy doing versus the things that need to be done. And that takes leadership. That takes really clarity around what the business needs to start with. It takes clarity around what people who you need to execute those tasks in the business or those results in the business and then which tasks need to be done in what order to get to there. Okay. So it's clarity around the what, it's who to get the results, and then it's how would be the activities that need to happen to create that result in the end. So if this is you, if you feel like I feel constantly let down by my team, I'm disappointed in the fact that they're not following through on things or, you know, my expectations are, are not being met or exceeded, it's probably time to really get clear around the first time you say this to yourself in your head. What exactly is it? What do I want them to be doing? What is it that they should be doing, right? Besides just reading my mind, because we all want that, of course. But what is it that we want them to be doing on a daily, daily basis, hourly, daily, weekly basis? And how do we create a system that facilitates an experience in which I am not the one who has to follow up and everything relies upon me, but that the business has its own structure and its own process that people can follow um, to execute on those tasks, right? So think of like anything in operation that is a well-oiled machine, you're in and out burger. You get in line, you know that you're going to give your order to somebody, you're going to go pay at the window, you're going to get your food. What's happening on the back end is an entire system where you know, the owner of In-N-Out doesn't have to sit there. She doesn't have to oversee everybody and everything that's going on. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing at the burger station, where the sauce goes on, where the bur where the, the buns go on. And there's consistency in that process because there is a system in place. And so that is the goal. So, okay, I hope this has been helpful. I really want um, you to know that you're not cray-cray. Uh, if you feel like your expectations aren't me being met, it's probably because you haven't clearly communicated them or the business has grown and your expectations have changed and it's time to re-communicate and reset those standards of excellence with your team members so that they can make you happy. They can, they can do a good job. They want to be successful and they want to wow and impress you. And so allow them to do that by showing them exactly what success looks like in your company, okay? So just to recap those three, the tactician versus strategist, time versus results, and proactivity versus reactivity. Nail these and you're going to have your expectations met the majority of the time. And then finally, I'll leave this. If you are one of those people, like many of the women I've been talking to over the past few weeks who are just wondering what's happening during downtime with their employees, particularly during summer here, get them enrolled into summer school, klcconsultants.com forward slash summer school. It is still hopping. We're only on week three. Um, these are all on-demand recordable sessions after the live. So if for some reason you can't make a session, you have access to the recording and the resources and templates and PDFs and checklists and all the things that we are providing to you when we teach these sessions, you have access to all of that. All of the replays will be available through the end of September. So as you sort of get things going again and your team's bringing back or you're bringing back these things to implement into the business, you have those um, recordings to go back and reference as needed um, and take the load off of yourself. Let us do the heavy lifting. And I encourage you to allow your team to show your team that you trust them, to allow them to take some autonomy uh, and some ownership over some of the things that you might be micromanaging in your business because you're not sure if they're going to be done right. Let them have them. 
give them a chance to try and fail and learn from that experience, just like you're doing that as a leader, just like you're learning how to better manage your expectations, do your work to understand a baseline of where you are with that employee. And then you can give them the tools that they need to get to where they need to go. And I promise you, this is going to help your business tremendously. And it's going to help you feel better about having your expectations met. All right, leader. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I will see you same place, same time next week.